ask you for. Okay, I'm rolling. Okay, we're at 166th Street and Western Avenue in Gardena at uh, the site of the original Yellow Basket uh, hamburgers. The old Yellow Basket signage is still there, but it's been changed in name a couple of times since Yellow Basket went out of here. They didn't start with this building, though. They started on the corner over here where all them bushes are, and it was a hamburger stand. There was no area where you could go in inside the building at all. And it was rounded, went right around the corner at the, at the corner here. And you just went up to the window, ordered your burgers, they cooked them, put them in the bag, handed them through the window at you, and away you go. Prices were good too. Hot dogs were 15 cents, hamburgers 25 cents, cheeseburger was 35 cents, a double hamburger was 45 cents, and the double cheeseburgers were either 55 or 60 cents, somewhere in there. Large order of French fries cost you a quarter, and uh, that all started uh, with that hamburger stand here in uh, 1954. What do you remember about coming here? Did you, would you come here on a date or something? Is that the kind of place? No, uh, that was when I was too young to even think about that, uh, 1954, I was like eight years old. Uh, but I had a dollar a week allowance for cutting our grass and doing a few chores at home. Plus I had my other little side jobs that I did, other people's yards and so forth. So I always had money. So I'd walk down here and treat myself to a hamburger and a soda or something once in a while uh, during that period of time. And uh, my dad got to coming down and getting the whole family uh, burgers uh, at least one day a week uh, after they opened up here. So yeah, we ate quite a few hamburgers out of that uh, old original Yellow Basket hamburger stand. Right across the street where the building is here, back in those days, was a lumber yard. The name of it was Patton and Blinn's Lumber Yard and their signs said they had been there since 1880. They went out sometime in the 1970s, but I'm not sure of the exact year. So I kind of lost track of what was being put in and taken out for a while there back in that time. Right here across the street, this brick building, the top story used to be the old uh, courthouse that served the South Bay area. I guess it was the predecessor to the uh, Torrance Superior Court now. In the lower half there, where it's now a storefront church, there used to be an old-fashioned drugstore, complete with a soda fountain, with a marble top counter, and stools that swiveled around and round. And I can remember in my single-digit years, my mom shopping in the drugstore, and me sitting on one of those swivel stools just swiveling around in circles, having a ball. And uh, that about covers that building. Over here where it says Okinawa Association of America, that used to be a beer bar. And uh, in the mid, mid to late 60s, uh, when I became an adult, I used to go in there and have a few mugs of beer. He had more brands of beer than any other bar in town. A brand you couldn't get in any other bar. You could get it right there at the bank club. My dad first came here in 1927. That was a bank. I believe, if I remember it correctly, he said it was the first national bank. It later, during the Depression, became a WPA sewing room. And then later on, a guy named Brownie bought it, started that bar, and called it the bank club. And it was the bank club for many years until Brownie decided to retire and sold the business out. The building was vacant for quite a few years and then the Okinawa Association took it over as well as the building right next door to it, which used to be a liquor store. And uh, I patronized that liquor store quite a lot uh, at the same time I was patronizing the uh, bank club. And what, what kind of people hung out at the bank club? It was mostly a wor the working class. Uh, you know, your pitcher of beer 
after work uh, drinkers, shuffleboard players, that kind of crowd. They had the long shuffleboard and uh, old, the old bowling machines and all kind of pinball machines and so forth that you played in there. So it's just the guys that kick back after a hard day's work or on a weekend day with some buddies and play a few games and have a few beers. That was the kind of crowd that hung out there. It was your basic working class. And back in those days, there was a lot of factories in the area, including some of the bigger ones, Bethlehem Steel over on 190th, Harvey Aluminum over on uh, 190th and Western, Douglas Aircraft right next door to it at 190th and Normandy. Up here on Artesia and Western, you had Honeywell. So it was basically employees from all those the factories that uh, hung out in these places uh, back in those days. So that was basically what your clientele was. All of us working stiffs. <laughs> I worked at Douglas Aircraft at the time. So I was one of them. 